So what to do when the weather is pretty bad and uh, you feel that you really, really want to take some photos? Well, you could do still life. But the thing is, is why be boring? Because I'm about to make this a lot more interesting. Greetings all, welcome to this one. Um, yeah, this one is, um, it's still life, but with a bit of a twist. And the twist is that we're gonna do long exposure and create some light trails. This is really, really simple to do. Um, and it's very experimental, meaning it's a lot of trial and error and a lot of photographs you're gonna take until you get one that you like. Traditionally, still life, you tend to use a bit of a, um, a natural light source, uh, from a window or you can set up some studio lighting or this sort of thing to um, help create the, 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 the photo. But this one's gonna be a little bit different because it's gonna be done in a dark room or should I say dark-ish. This is where I say the experimental part is gonna come in. I'll explain a little bit more a little bit later on as we actually go through the steps. Okay, so what are we going to need? Obviously, apart from the obvious of your, your camera, um, when it comes to actually choosing your lens, try to avoid using a wide angle lens, unless obviously space is really limited. You want to be pretty far back from a uh, subject, the subject, a good meter or two back, mainly because obviously there's going to be a lot of movement around the, 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 the object that you're going to be using. Uh, tripod, obviously this is, um, because it's going to be a, a, a long exposure, you're looking at between eight to 10 seconds. So you're not going to be able to do this handheld. So a tripod is pretty much a must. Uh, obviously your subject, you could choose whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. Just let your imagination run wild. I've got a particular object that I've, um, I'm going to use. More on that one in a minute. And of course you're going to need a light source. Now you could use actually anything that you really want to as your light source. You can use a match, candles, torches which is what i am going to use just a little bit on these um these are actually uh, uh it's a laser pointer that i actually used for um playing with the cats with um, but it's also got a uh, normal torch not going to use that one because it's a burst of light as as, as in you know uh, and it's also got a little uv uh, part on it obviously that's used for um, banknotes and detecting urine Oof. Uh, these are actually not that expensive to buy if you go on Amazon. I've actually got two because I bought one, thought I lost it, bought another one and I found the other one. So I've got two and I'm going to use both of these. One's, um, it will become a bit more apparent later on because one I'm going to use the UV and the other part I'm going to use the, uh, the little laser pointer um, just to get two different colours I suppose. Pick these up for only about two or three quid on Amazon and if you've got a cat, no love them. Now onto the optional things. You're going to need a bit of a, a, a dark backdrop. Anything which is like a big piece of black card or even a dark curtain. The darker the better. Remote shutter release. Now I'm not going to use a remote shutter release purely because how I'm going to actually use, um, even though I've got one, I'm just going to use the camera's um, inbuilt timer. So press the button and then, you know, a couple of seconds later, it will start the exposure. The reason that that is um, a... a, a a good sort of thing to do is to use the inbuilt timer and that is um, it counts down so then you know when to start going as opposed to pressing and going, oh I need to start, you know, it just gives you that bit more of a time. <clears throat> the first step is we are going to start uh, in a lit room because obviously you're going to need to see what you're doing. Obviously choose your subject that you're going to use. Uh, I'm obviously going to be using this old camera. And a nice flat surface. Um, I'm doing this in the kitchen. Uh, it's on the table and I've got the backdrop all set up. Just to raise the subject up, I've just put a couple of books underneath just to raise it up a little bit more. It's not really necessary. That's just probably me being a bit fussy. So the second step, uh, set your camera up on the tripod and uh, compose your shot how, however you feel that you're going to want it. Um, I'm trying to sort of stick it to like rules of thirds and this sort of thing, you know, try and keep things in certain areas and just try to give it that little bit more of a professional sort of a look, but not really necessary. You can just whack it straight in the middle if you prefer, but I don't know, try and be a bit more, yeah, try and be a bit more artistic. As I've previously said about a wide angle lens, try to avoid it um, if you can, uh, just to, you can even do this with just a basic kit lens 
which I've actually done with this one, uh, purely just to show that it can be done with just simple basic equipment. Uh, all you need to do is make sure that there is space between the backdrop and the subject and the camera because obviously you're going to be moving uh, a light source around. This one is purely in manual mode. This is no set it in, you know, aperture priority within. Do this in full manual mode. And for those who are probably scared of manual mode, don't be frightened of it. It's it, it's easy. Honest to God, it is so easy. Now, when we talk about um, the setting side of this, there is no correct exposure or saying use these settings or whatever purely because your the darkness of your room is going to affect the exposure um it, there's just so much that's going to uh, affect this so i'll give you a starting point and then we're going to go from there on what to change and how to change and when to change just to try to get the exposure right one thing i will say is um take a few test shots with no you know no swirling of lights just to make sure that your subject is uh, bright enough and you're not picking up too much of the backdrop and this sort of thing so it is a bit of trial and error to, to get that but be patient with it and yeah it'll be worth it in the end even though there is no correct settings to tell you to use the, the, the guide and the starting point is going to be pretty pretty straightforward. So we set your shutter speed to 8 seconds, your aperture set to f8, and the ISO, do not put it on auto ISO, and the reason being is because you're going to be either, you, you're going to be aiming to slightly underexpose. If you set your aperture, your ISO to auto, it will automatically crank that up and that's not what you want. So you need to set the, your ISO. This is going to be between 100 and 400. Remember, this is just to start with. Focus on the subject itself. Um, there is a quite a simple tip that I use and I use this all the time when doing anything that's tripod based and the reason being because everything is always pin sharp and it is always perfectly focused so you will zoom into you digitally zoom on the camera you will zoom into the subject manually focus so it's sharp zoom back out again job done this one is depending on whether you're going to be using your shutter release or not I'm going to say don't bother with the shutter release, but it is an option there if you want it. Set your camera to um, either two seconds, five seconds, ten seconds delay. Uh, just allow the, so when you press the button, just allows the camera not to, to, to shake a bit and be settled before it starts the exposure. So now's the time to actually take the shot and have a, actually have a go now. So get your light source ready and press that button. Once the timer counts down and the exposure starts, literally just move the light around, just create nice little patterns. There's no set way to do it. Just literally just wave your arm in front, behind, around, in circles, up, down, however you fancy, actually fancy wanting to do it. And um, check the outcome. If the image is overexposed, try lowering the ISO or try a smaller aperture. So just increase the aperture value you're decreasing the aperture size if the shot looks too underexposed this is where you need to either increase your iso or open up that aperture if you're finding that you're running out of time because you wanted more light trails than you've been able to get into the shot this is where and the only point where you're going to change your shutter speed <clears throat> so you go from 8 to 10 seconds or 12 seconds um, but you will need to note that if you change your shutter speed then you are going to need to, to also change your you know, aperture or your ISO accordingly. So of course, once you've done all this and you've played around with one subject, 
change it, try something different. Like I said, I actually tried this with, um, uh, actually with my lad and uh, his, uh, his girlfriend just for a bit of fun. Um, and I only did a couple of shots just for, just a bit of a practice of the play around really. Um, yeah, um, yeah, they were sort of like okay, but um, a little bit more practice probably might be needed with that one. And um, yeah, it was getting pretty late at night and I wanted to uh, basically pack up and go to bed. So uh, I could have carried on a bit longer, but I didn't. So uh, probably one for uh, another time. But uh, yeah, let me know how it goes. And uh, we're happy the, with the results. And remember is, you know, the, the, the only tip that I can say is that if you're finding that your subject is too dark and if you're increasing it you, um, to make the, your subject brighter, it's also increasing the backdrop, um, which is making it look weird or strange, then one of the things that you can do, which is actually what I ended up doing in the end, because um, was actually to use a, another light source that wasn't pointing at the subject, but it was brightening behind the camera and then uh, adjusting the light source just so it was increasing it slightly on the subject but not so much on the backdrop. One thing that you can try with this one is if you could turn um, a light on in another room just to bring a little bit of light in on the subject. Um, yeah, a few little things there that you could probably try and if you do have, um, I've actually put the torch down, um, if you have a, a, a second torch you could also do just a couple of seconds uh, as well of just holding the torch on the subject, turn it off and then doing your light trails quickly as well, uh, that is also another option. Um, but yeah, it is literally a, a play around and experiment. Uh, I'm going to say actually in total I was probably playing around for about three hours and took in somewhere of the region of about 40 shots. Out of the 40, there was probably, what, five or six that I really liked. The rest of them were either, some were underexposed uh, as I was playing around and some didn't look right, some just looked a mess. And But that's the whole point of this is, um, it, is a, it, it is a trial and error and just keep going, keep going, keep going. You, eventually you will get one and you think, oh, I like that. And, but also as well is once you've actually took the photo and um, I will be doing a bit about black and white photography coming up soon is switch it from colour to black and white and notice the difference as always. Here's the, the few of the ones I took, the ones that I really liked and yeah one of them I took is actually on here. And as always, thanks for joining on this one. Hope you found it useful and let me know how it goes. Until the next time, thanks for joining me guys. Take care, stay safe. I'll see you soon.